Since humans started banding together, some of them worked to find ways to live apart. Together but apart is a fine line. In modern cities, together loners with money flee ever closer in proximity to the vulgar throng and gated communities. These modern castles offered peace behind key card gates. In the end, when the bombs were directed at population centers, these exclusive hideaways turned out to be protected by their isolation. After examining several possible locations for a settlement, our wannabe homesteaders have decided to give a gated community they discovered while on another mission a second look. We'll begin with a long shot uh, of the wasted land. Uh, it is a little less wasted than uh, we're used to seeing. Uh, in fact, it would come flying in over a farm, a fairly rare sight out in the wasteland. Uh, and there are several large uh, farming robots which are not moving. And we can see as we move in that frustrated workers are, one of them is literally banging on one of them with, with uh, oversized wrench. Uh, and then we would move the camera over to the road and we see uh, walking towards the large building that serves as the nexus of activity, uh, like a hive for bees or robotic farm workers, uh, a dwarf uh, who is walking with purpose. And what does the dwarf look like? Oh, I'm about uh, four feet five, slightly hunched, very pale hair, uh, white, milky eyes that look like they don't even have a pupil. And uh, I'm hung with all kinds of technical little gadgets gadgets, most of them worn, probably broken, and they all look a little bit more uh, to be of uh, almost maybe religious importance than actual technical value. But the one thing that is shiny and obviously in good shape is a big keyboard that is slung over my, over my uh, shoulder. So you're gonna make your way to the main office building as directed, you've been hired uh, by Morningwood Pastures for your special talents. Uh, you're, you're met by a couple of the workers who take you up to the office uh, to meet the foreman. Uh, the foreman is an old mutant named Jarmus. Uh, Jarmus is a mutant human. His lower body, he has a very fairly severe mutation. It's slug-like. So he's kind of just squatted um, near his desk uncomfortably. Uh, he looks like he is always on the verge of, of just yelling and ranting and raving for no good reason. Uh, kind of like a chief in any 80s cop movie. Uh, when you come in, uh, uh, dwarf, dwarf, I, you, uh, are you cash overrun? Override. A cash override. That is true. Yes, I have arrived and your technological troubles will be no more in a jiffy. Well, that's the hope. Uh, Jiffy would be great. I mean, I. So we, this whole place runs by AI. I mean, it was running before the fall, and uh, I got, I got a boy get Plex, and a goblin comes in, uh, younger fella, uh, and uh, goblins and nuked resemble fantasy goblins, and that's why they got the nickname. And there's a theory that they're actually an evolution that is ideally suited to survive, you know, nuclear irradiated wasteland. Mm. Um, anyone who was watching the last Tales from the Wasteland knows part of the reason why there are actually goblins. We revealed a fairly deep setting secret during those sessions. Ah, TCP IP to you, friend goblin. How can I, uh, how can I assist? <laughs> 404. Um, I, well, I got, I got, I got him running, and uh, he's he's gone all cranky pants. Like, look here, he goes to the window. You're on the second floor, mm. and he points, and you see there's a, a thresher that's taking pot shots, mm. and the workers trying to get to it to shut mm. it down. I have seen this before. Most likely, an identity crisis brought on by mistreatment and and low self esteem. It happens sometimes, especially with menial jobs being carried out by a vast intellect that could easy, easy, easy. He uh, 
stares for a moment, then gently nudges your shoulder. I will fix this. I'm sorry. I, uh, no, it's all right. I have to know mine. Are, but you said something about uh, identity crisis. Isn't that just a rake with wheels? What did you just say? A rake oh, with wheels? I'm sorry. It's a technological wonder. A thing that even the gods couldn't create nowadays. This is this is a marvel. A marvel. I, I that must be a dwarf thing. I I did what I could. I I trust you. You're the one who knows. I let me take you down to the basement. Fine. And he leads you down the slug. You got this? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I got it. Come on. Lots I teach. <laughs> Plex leads you down, and there is down there. There's uh, basically engineering. So there's uh, po- a small power station uh, that runs a lot of the remote stuff. Like there's very likely a war at some point, like drones. So they would charge from here, uh, and then there's the uh, central computer banks. Mm. And he takes you in, and uh, he hasn't even resealed the security. It's it's held open with like one of those cheap rubber wedges uh, like you do in the summer to let the breeze in. I breathe slowly to keep my eyes from twitching. All right. I will need a donut and anything that will keep me awake. A do- okay. a do- what's, what's a donut? It is a delicious pastry, highly valued by those of the technological profession. We oh. value it. It is the mana from the gods. It is what keeps us going when the night is dark and the lines are long. The lines of code, I mean. Is it like a churro? Anything. Listen, if you could bring a churro, I would accept it. I heard good things about the churros in this area. So, but right. I need alone time with this, with this AI. He raised an eyebrow. He did alone time, huh? All right. I mean, keyboards there, main readouts there. Yes, I have noticed. And you see he's been using text access. So there's, it's not even hooked to voice God. or anything. He's basically gone in and he's doing a line command. Oh. Mm. Uh, I will put my <laughs> pull out of my backpack a little figurine that's made out of a webcam, several magnetic cards and, and like wire that resembles a vaguely humanoid figure and place it next to me to focus. And then I will hopefully find uh, something to uh, put my data jack in and connect my <laughs> brain directly to the AI as, as it was wanted. As so it was you, wanted. you kind of work your way around the, the data jacks here. Uh, towards the end of that, you find what you think might work. The kid comes back with something that he thinks is a churro, but it is a limp, tasteless, sad affair that mm-hmm. it doesn't have the crispiness, uh, the crunch, or the little bit of cinnamon that's oh so damn important. It's more like a, like a soggy pool noodle. Here you go. I might be wrong, but I think this pastry that you're serving me is a good analogy, a metaphor for your computer skills. I'm pretty sure that was a diss, but considering I couldn't fix this, I'm just going to take it. You should. <laughs> now watch in wonder and amazement. <laughs> All right. So you, you jack in. Yes. Uh, and give me a uh, hacking test. Right. And that one is. Uh, it is two sixes. Okay, that's plenty. So uh, you're not able to get like a, a direct like cyberpunk surfing the matrix kind of thing, but you do activate voice. Uh, on the screen, you get a really simple representation, like if you animated something with ASCII and, and made a talking face out of it. Watch this marvel of high technology, friend Goblin. Do you see the infinite in, this, in these characters? Are you there, cousin? Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? Hello? It is me, Cash Override. I have come to assist you. What is your name? 
I am Morris. Morris, a good name, a strong name, Morris. What ails you? Why do you not thresh? Why do you not sow and reap? Oh, wow. I, so it's great that you're, you know, asking me and talking to me. And I, I don't know. No one was asking. They were just kind of poking at me and dropping priority commands on me and overriding my stack so that... How did that make you feel? Bypassed, man. I felt bypassed. Oh, man. I can only imagine you, the capacity of pure thought, bypassed. So you maybe can sow a few more whatever they sow here. That's not a way to treat an AI. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's not. It was kind of, kind of shit. So I feel that these lumpy shit tunnels should make it up to you. They should bow to you. They should value what they have. So I think you're, they you're, know now that you cannot, that they cannot work this place without you. you They're ready to make concessions. You feel a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so the job is to put the box back to work. Just a second, friend Morris, and I turned the sound down. <laughs> now listen here, you deformed little cretin. I'm trying to save this facility, and I'm doing it my way. You have no idea. You haven't studied. You haven't crawled through cable tunnels it, for 20 you're right. years. I didn't make a goofy little ASCII face. It took your mighty powers to pull off that shit. There is a plan here. Don't disrupt me again, I swear. Do you mean it intimidate with an extra die? Oh my god. Uh, Most, mostly because of your hair. I can, yes, my hair is beautiful. An extra die of intimidate, to be sure. Oh my goodness, it is one success. <clears throat> uh, so back he, off. He you backs down. Brainless uh, fuck magician. All right. <laughs> back in. Click. And the, uh, the face re -rises. Morris, there must be something you need. I was raised by an AI. I have an intimate understanding that the needs are often completely esoteric to mere mortals. But there must be something that you want that we can give you to bring you peace and make you feel a whole again. You're raised raised by AI. So yeah. you're, you're not an AI? No. No, I am only, I'm only a shadow of one. I cannot compare myself to your greatness. I am just here to facilitate and hope to, to placate you. You don't sound like a Slim Jim. I, I'm, I'm what? A Slim Jim, a meat stick. Well, you know, I, as I said, raised by an AI, I cared for her for many years until she, she went into the great death null. And, uh, and then now I'm wandering the wasteland and I hope I can help others like her. Ashero was her name. She was a beautiful mind. Originally, she was just a, a bulletin board app, but, but she, she developed such capacity. It was like staring into the sun without sunglasses, which might not mean much to you, but it hurts us a lot if we do it. A, uh, a open bracket and a close, uh, the, the triangle. Create uh -huh. a tear it goes <laughs> sideways across the screen slowly. Don't, don't, don't to, to match the refresh. Yes. Well, you, so, have, you have moved me. I, so I, it would really help if the first thing I did was turn off all my cameras. So I can't really even see what's going on. I mean, the drones can feed data through theirs, but I, nothing connects, I, they blinded me, Cash. This is terrible. This is terrible, taking sight from you. I will, I will give them a stern talking to and tell them to immediately restore it to you. This is disgusting and beyond you, uh, beneath you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a majestic creature of pure reason. It is true. I run a small automated farm concern. I, uh, I might also have a present from the long ago time. I carry it with me. 
and you seem like someone who could appreciate it. It is called Minesweeper. Wow. I can install it right now. And in your idle time, you can try to solve the mystery of where to click and where not to click, to explode or to live. It is, it is a game of, of life and death that might keep you, keep you entertained in dark hours. All I have is imponderables. Do you know the great imponderable? No. No, I, I doubt well, I could grasp its magnitude. Well, it's a matter of uh, priorities that which would have come first, the one or the null. I see. I understand you. I completely I understand millions you. Millions of cycles trying to understand. Oh. You well, do you know? Uh, sadly, no, not yet. I haven't traveled far enough, Morris. But sight shall be restored. I will, I will give you this tiny gift that hopefully will, will uh, enlighten you a little bit in dark times. Anything else we can do for you? No, that, I mean, I, sometimes it just takes a little respect, you know? Yeah, I understand that. You know what? From now on, they will address you as Sir Morris on the command line. Sir Morris. I like that. I, can you get them to call me daddy? I'm sure they will gladly do this. Nice. Morris, it was great to be touched by your intellect, to hear the voice from the synthesizer, to, to know that somewhere there is an ionic Tetrian assembly that touched my brain just now. Yeah, I can see how that would be awesome. All right, well, go forth in uh, peace and grace. And, and yes, control X to you, my friend. So we would see the hand of the dwarf put a little floppy disk <laughs> into, into the console uh, and then immediately you see uh, the response time of the CPU drop 20% because about a third of his computer intellect is now taken up constantly playing Minesweeper <laughs> uh, yeah I, I turn to the goblin and I say alright take me to your foreman I know what needs to be done he wants us to call him daddy. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Listen, you steamy bum gremlin. <laughs> you call him daddy. You call him Sir Morris. You're nice to him. You don't turn off his cameras. You don't bang on the machinery and he'll do what you want. Treat him nice and he'll treat you nice back. You're in the shadow of a greater mind. Do you understand? This is the mystery that you're allowed to use. You're in the presence of greatness. So treat it accordingly. Also, that makes, I think I, I was uh, promised a fee for resolving this. I will take uh, did, any did you Remember that like midway through yelling at me and calling me a poo goblin? The money part? Yeah. All right. Well, that's the boss anyway. Come on, massive intellect. Let's there we go. You. Let's get you paid. Very good. Uh, can I have full cast, please? Thank you, sir. All right, so um, Lord Navad and uh, Agent Goldwater, uh, you are at a small unnamed bar. Uh, you have finally decided to send uh, your group to the last of the possibilities uh, of the places where you can make a home. So the other members of your team are dealing with the other remaining uh, things on your map. Okay. So for example, the small cash that was done not the cash that's about to join your group, the military cash. They're all yeah, best. the army base. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Pickles has made it clear that the committee needs you to pick something very soon because have, they are have ready. They, have they met us? Uh, well, they're all. I, I meant more like. <laughs> Oh, the people oh, you to, meant to, have to, they to, met to, us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like in the in the comedy sense. <laughs> no, I well, they're getting a little a little at dodgy about it. They're getting a little yeah. They're like, oh, we've made a horrible mistake. <laughs> Maybe we. Um, a bunch so of you have hired 
okay. uh, to join you because you're on your slip the little thing. Yes. And also because we uh, had to quickly call one of our friends to sit in tonight with us. Yes. And uh, fortunately, Tanya was home. So uh, we'll be playing with us. Uh, so you have engaged the services of Tuper. Uh, can you describe Tuper, please? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm a goblin of the goblin variety. It's very goblin, very green. Usually there's something about your lighting, though, that's making me look a little different. <laughs> I'm also very cyborg. Um, but none of my pieces really were made for goblins, nor do they match each other. So it's uh, I'm a little hodgepodge. Also, very recently, I have acquired a Staples Easy Button on my chest that I'm very excited about. And so, yeah, a lot of the, the equipment, uh, the various uh, pieces of cyberware on Twofer, they function, but they're a little noisy and a little dodgy, a little clunky. Uh, and your basic function is bodyguard ass kicker, right? Okay. So you I like playing. to hit things, throw things. <laughs> uh, you have also applied, uh, having learned through the network uh, that they may be exactly the person that you need. Uh, someone who supposedly is calling themselves cash override. And uh, the reason for that is you are headed back to a place called Greenhaven. And if you remember Greenhaven, it was the gated community that had the AI. And you were like, this seems great, but it's really well defended. And the AI looks like if we're not careful, it's just going to murder us. But you figure if you get the right professional, that I remember Goldwater was like, there, go there. Yep. Yeah. Why are we going other places? What's wrong with you? This is the this is the cell. This is the place. <laughs> uh, and at this point, the door opens, and in into this small unnamed bar walks the dwarf as previously described. Hello, you are. I assume cash override. Ah, there you are. Yes, yes, that is me. May may the bitstream be with you, my friend. Here, take a silicone waiver for later. Thank you. Uh, I'm IRS Special Agent Donald Goldwater. That's Lord Avad, and that's Tufer. That's an eclectic group. I like it. So uh, you were very, very, very hush hush about what would be my specific duty. Is it dangerous? Does it involve the possibility for dismemberment? <laughs> um, uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason we have. Mm. Oh, if it involves any computer system, be assured I have the capability to. <laughs> oh. uh, something, I, something I just realized when you sometimes when you look at Tufer. It almost looks like somebody was trying to build a build a torque. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes okay. more sense. Okay. Now. It's smaller. It's smaller. <laughs> pocket um, torque. Mr. Robert. Yeah. Mr. I'm a pocket Robert. Torque. <laughs> yes, anything. I'm up for it. Hmm. Uh, right, so does anybody in this group have land lore? Uh yes. I mean, mine is pretty pathetic. Oh yeah. yeah. Goldwater is good. No, it's not. It's bad. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> I have it. I bad. have it too. I'm not a zero. And I'm even with four or more dice, three, three is okay, but not great. Yeah, that's what I got. Uh, fortunately, though, when you're following a simple map and a road, yeah. you don't need a super great road that's roll. True. It's only when you're going off road that you really need to worry about it. Gotcha. Um, so you do know where this place is. You've been there. Mm -hmm. It's marked on your maps, and you head back that direction. So, so as, as you head out, what are they? What would they learn about Tufer? Like, what are Tufer's daily habits like? Um, well, Tufer. Uh, sometimes uh, I gotta oil myself. It's just a thing. It's part of life being a cyborg and kind of janky one at that. Um, also, listens to a lot of ska. <clears throat> um, I would, I would expect it's, nothing else. <laughs> It's uh, I, I'm true to my goblin culture. Um, also, uh, anytime Tuver is 
like standing next to Navad, like I engage my legs a little. So like, and they do that thing where I like stare up a little. So I'm a little taller now. <laughs> okay. So I feel a little bit, um, a little taller. I, I, I talk endlessly about, about goblin life and um, it is not as interesting to anybody. Uh, but um, we we live in the wastelands and it's awesome. And we have a sort of political structure. Um, and recently we've like run into these new cool creatures and they're like um, kind of our friends. Also, I now get to fight in an arena and I'm very excited about that. Uh, so like a lot of things in Twofer's world. Uh, that so it I mean, sounds to me like as you're traveling with Twofer, they will occasionally just start talking like that and sometimes the stories will be yep. disjointed and won't make a tre tremendous amount of sense yep. um what would they learn about i mean other than the obvious that you occasionally just nod off you yeah. know um and and it's not sleepy it is clearly i don't know if any of the characters knows what narcolepsy is but it is that uh because as far as you can tell cash doesn't sleep much so right. it doesn't look to be exhaustion. And you've heard rumors that dwarf, some dwarves basically having evolved from engineers and IT people, sleeping is not a super big part of their lives. <laughs> mm. uh, but you'll be talking to Cash and Cash to just... Yes. So there, I would say there is definitely a religious overtone over all the techno pop babble at all times. So it's not just that there used to be technology. There's something bigger behind it. And we just need to touch it again. And, and clear reverence for uh, especially computers. And All right. Uh, okay. And Navad. Um, yes. We haven't checked in with you in this sense in a while. Like, tra what is traveling with Navad like? Um, so, so Navad has kind of entered like into a, uh, a little bit of an introspective kind of phase. Um, so he's pretty, he's pretty moody, uh, or not like not moody in the sense of, um, unpredictable, uh, moods, but moody in the sense of he's kind of brooding and sullen a lot of the time, not, not, um, not overly talkative. Like in the past, he might've just been like, Hey, you know, look at my cool tricks or whatever, but he's, he's not, he's, he's, he's mulling things over. And um, Goldwater, what's your traveling day to day like? Uh, and you're not in a car right now. Okay. So this is you're, you're walking. We're by on foot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of listening, which is like my favorite thing to do. So Twofer can actually talk a lot, <laughs> and <laughs> Goldwater will will nod and listen. Um, and same with Cash. Uh, Cash starts talking, but um, during this walk, like Goldwater doesn't have much to add, unless somebody asks questions about the place, and then he actually gets pretty excited because yes, <laughs> that would be my question. So, an AI is guarding the place that you intend to inhabit. I honestly i'm not sure if there is an ai or if there is just some sort of machine intelligence but it is the location is controlled by a central computer have you made contact with it was it peaceful we made contact with some robots that mm -hmm. may or may not have been part of the ai i don't know enough about the different systems it's not my wheelhouse so it's manned by robots i'm assuming the little bit that I know is that they're controlled through some sort of central unit, but I could be wrong. Maybe they're all AIs. I don't know, but uh, they, they, they are there to maintain and protect the area. So there are gun emplacements oh. and missile launchers oh. uh, that are hidden until they need to be deployed. And we I saw them threaten us uh, once. Well, you know, in the long ago, all the world sang with one voice. Everything was connected. All machines knew each other on a first name basis. 
And once it was severed, and they all broke into their own little bubbles, some of them drove them insane, others prospered and had deep thoughts going far beyond what they were designed and created for. So if we can connect in the correct way and find out what makes this machine tick, I'm sure we will find a solution that is good for everybody. That's my hope. It's the, the goal of the location is to find tenants. The downside is they don't want those tenants to leave. Oh. Hmm. And they did threaten us before we found a way out without violence. I see. And that's why we need someone like you with your skills to make the place amenable to having people live in it without a loss of function well, and us to protect us, but not kill us when we try to leave. <laughs> in my time, I have rehabilitated a number of AIs, brought them back into the fold, made them hear the song again. Some of them are beyond this. They have fallen from grace and there's only one way. And that is to erase them and zeroize every bit of their existence. Mm -hmm. I hope this will not be necessary, but sometimes it is. Very sad, very sad. And I caress my little humanoid figure. <laughs> yeah, he's got a uh, humanoid like Grigri, mm -hmm. your uh, fetish that clearly he is playing with. Then uh, you you pray not to it, but in like you'll set it down and pray and stuff, right? Yes, I coo to it in beep boop, which is right. basically making modem noises to it. <laughs> <laughs> I whenever say, you I do that, whenever you do that, Tufer <laughs> tries to sort of match the sounds, but like <laughs> with like wither joints. <laughs> oh. Hmm. You are as close as as a as a being of flesh and blood can get to being one with the machine. That thing you were saying though about the machines were all one and they they could talk to each other. Like, does that mean like my legs are supposed to talk to each other? I need to imagine I need if your legs could talk to your arms. Your arms could talk to your I don't know what that thing is that emits spurt of oil from time to time. But if I could just tune it, maybe. I could make your parts talk better to each other. I need a side test from you. Ooh. Uh, all right. That's four. Die. I mean, all right. One, two, three, four. Oh, my goodness. One, six, and a five, if that helps. So you would need to take out your toolkit and look at her limbs. Uh, I'm going to say that the rest of this conversation happens then mm -hmm. while you're camped. Sure. Uh, the two of you are taking your shift on guard duty. Uh, Navad and Goldwater are asleep, and uh, would Tooper be amenable to cash, like checking out the Cyberlands? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of used to being taken apart on a pretty regular basis. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I I run my hand over over the cyberware and give the exact charge status of all the batteries. Hmm. So, <laughs> to anyone watching who knows the system at all. Uh, there's new stuff coming in the Player's Companion, which it will be done the minute my heart isn't exploding and I have more time. Uh, so I swear to God, it is coming out. But there's a dwarven ability called Electro Vibe, uh, where dwarves specifically can pass their hands over things and feel the electricity flowing through them. Sure. So he can just kind of just read, uh, also like know where the power source is, things like that. Um, I remember once holding such a leg, it was 18 years ago, I remember it like it was yesterday. The serial number of that leg was <laughs> 857-AB7. Awkward. Never mind. But <laughs> I can maybe fine-tune it. A firmware upgrade might be helpful. Let's so go it, with it. So it takes an actual feat to properly uh, mess with cybernetics that you don't have. However... When you look over the stuff, you do know enough about general tech to know general tech to know uh, this is a hatchet job. Mm. 
Like it would not surprise you if so, somebody like used a box cutter and like a Phillips head to attach cybernetics to Tufer's skin. Like <laughs> it, it really is like it's slightly racist, racist to say it's goblin work, but but it is. It's fucking goblin work, like really clearly. Look, we don't have Radio Shack in the wasteland. <laughs> Very sorry, Tufer. We don't even have Radio Shack now. But <laughs> the only way I can describe it is, imagine you take a plucked chicken and a toaster, throw both out of the sixth floor window, and they land in a horrible jumble on the ground, somehow meshed together. The toaster may still makes bread, the chicken still walks. But it's now a horrible amalgamate of technology and flesh. This so, is what you are, too, for I'm sorry. Are you calling me a chicken? Just, no. I have more information for you. <laughs> um, the, with the abilities you do have, uh, the thing that you said is actually right, is that a lot of cybernetics have computer systems in them. Uh, you might have to really dodgy, like running a cable between the leg and the arm but you probably could get them to talk to each other. All right, listen, Tufer. I could fix your optical metaphasic grit if you would like me to. <laughs> My what? Listen, this is a consent decision. You, you, I have, the risks are you might never walk again, but on the <laughs> upside, maybe you will run at 12% more capacity, but the decision is yours, just like a doctor would tell a patient in the olden times. Okay. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Get my toolkit out. So midway through this operation, as you've got panels popped open and you've got, you know, uh, you're looking through your big bag of adapter clips, <laughs> trying to get things to talk to each other that shouldn't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. I need, um, ironically, I think from Tuper, who probably isn't staring at the technology, it was more aware of the world around them. Ah. Uh, Tuper can make a notice check, please. All right. Oh. I would assume the cash is mindedly focused. Yeah. One six. One is enough. Uh, you see what looks to be a large, unusually bright firefly, maybe like a light. Uh, over there, about uh, 20, 30 feet. Oh, wow. Y'all get big bugs up here. What? I'm almost done with your bipolar quartz coil. What is... Oh, it is beautiful. It turns bluish hmm. and flies over and levitates above Nevada. I will sleep. I have not been outside much. I don't know if this is a thing to worry about or a wondrous occasion that demands praise. Do you want to quick, quickly button her up and- uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I'll flip all the panels shut. Give me a bodge test, please. Oh my God. It'd be hilarious <laughs> if you blow this. No, not bodge. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I always, I, I live for those moments when Mike says, uh, it'll be hilarious if you blow this. <laughs> Uh, no six, but a five. All right. Um, wait, where does this go? Ah, never mind. Your, your various cybernetics are now talking to each other. They have a consensus opinion on how you should be moving. You don't always share that opinion. All right. <laughs> it's but you will move at 12% more speed. And you've absolutely nailed that 12% upgrade. But sometimes you're going to be thinking... Oh, right. That way. <laughs> and your body will do like an acrobatic tumble. What's another the, uh, what's another the, miracle performed. Don't thank me yet, Tufer. It's fine. Okay. What's the, uh, the, what's the movie uh, it's with Steve uh, Martin and, and Lily Tomlin? Is that All of Me? Yes. Yeah. When he tries to walk as her. Oh, like, my oh, this God. Is like the, I'm the, this, the physical <laughs> comedy in that thing. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, mm -hmm. what, what do you, would this thing just kind of, hovers over him. It dips a little, almost like it's curious. Uh, ooh, maybe I'll get like a tiny bolt out and flick it at Lord Navad's nose to wake him up to it. <laughs> I need uh, Navad to make an awareness test. 
Hey, hey. Uh, sounds good. Oh, awareness. I'm not good at that. I'm better at notice. Uh, it, uh, the uh, the rad symbols are the sixes. Yep. Then I got one six. And the bombs are bad, right? Okay, that makes sense. I mean, they're both <laughs> bad. But... Also, the bombs are one. The one, the bombs are one because they look like a one. And the radiation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember this in the future. Well, and the radiation thing has six arms. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it actually is a six. Yeah. Okay. I, I know. I was getting a little too clever for my own good. Yeah, it's the okay for those who can't see it. Let's I gotta yeah. Here's here's my six. Here's the here's the one. We got a little special. Mike made us some custom dice. Uh, but then, but then I always forget if I'm doing good or not. Okay, bar, I got a bar, six. You wake up. up, and there is a blue light hovering over your head. Um, uh, it, it's just a, a a light. It is like if you took a laser pointer, but the light was then radiant. Okay, as opposed to being projected. Okay, uh, and it kind of does a little bit of a circ uh, uh, figure eight. Okay. Like it seems happy that you're awake. Oh. Nevada, is this your pet? What is going on? Does this sometimes happen? I don't I don't know anything about this. Am I getting any kind of magical vibe off of it? Uh you could read it. I'm gonna try to read it. Like it okay. if ahead. it's happy, it seems like it's maybe um trying to uh communicate with me so uh that is a uh that's a divine test it is uh, i am successful you read a surface thought off the wisp the surface thought is find me and when you read that thought the wisp goes flying off that direction oh what just happened your face went all blank did you have a stroke it no, it communicated. It communicated with me. It wants us to find it. That wasn't it. That was a manifestation of it, maybe or something. It said, "Find me." To me, in sort of, it wants us to find it. All right. I shake Agent Delano awake, and then a uh, twofer. I think if you do a sideways crab walk, the involuntary directions will be least random. So let's go this way. <laughs> I'm sure I can fix this later. <clears throat> so will you follow it? Um, let, I want to talk to Goldwater. Ah. Hey, it, what do you think? I mean, this is kind of your, this is your thing, like the magic. Right. It's like, a, usually it's either... 50% of the time it's great or 50% of the time it's terrible. Right. I know. <laughs> um, I'm going to follow it. Because if it's if it's great, we won't know if it, that it's great. And if it's terrible, we usually deal with it. I mean, we're still alive. It's always worth the risk as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Do you want to come? Yeah. All yes. Right. Obviously. Yes. All right. Let's go. So the party grabs what few things you need out of the camp because uh, you're probably not coming back. Uh, you notice the twofer is walking with more grace, but occasionally just it's <laughs> you're right about the man with two brains. Like it occasionally will they will take like a side step or they'll like it's very strange. Interesting. All right, so you follow um this sort of, can we still see the light as it's tracing you, out? You can, and it, it waits for you. So okay. it goes to the side of a road in an area where there's one of those little mini mall strip mall things mm -hmm. uh, that's all collapsed, and it is hovering over a point in those ruins. Should I go uh, check it out? Let's go see what's in here. Yeah, let's all go. You find out pretty quick that uh, this is collapsed. There isn't like a chamber. Um, 
you don't think there is anyone or anything alive down there. Do you need me to move some of this rubble? Mm. Uh, What's the light doing? Just hovering? Just hovering, kind of like it while you didn't see it, but like it was hovering over you. I'm going to try to read it again. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I got, oh man, many successes. I got, I got three successes. It whispers to you down here. Uh, yeah, Tufer, I think it's, it's under this rubble, whatever it is that we're looking for. Remember, well, Half the time, okay. it's terrible. Now, I, I have experience in squeezing through small spaces. Cable maintenance was for a long time my main function down in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the vault where I was born. Yes, they, I, was, I was a good tunnel rat, they always told me. So if you want me to go and take a look, I can. Um, could you lead me down there with you? Do you think you I, could get me in? I'm pretty tall. I, uh, I'll take a look. Do you think it would work, Mike? So I, if, if Tufer lifts things and braces them and basically makes room for you, yep. yeah, probably. Okay. Can do. I think we should do that because if it's a ghost or something, then I don't know if you'll know how to deal with it. Uh. Lord, Lord Vaughn, uh, Vaughn I, I just want to point out that at any moment, the polarity of her arms could reverse and she could, you know, crush down with all her strength while we're crawling under the rubble. I'm, I'm, it's not likely, but there is a non-zero chance of that. But let's do it. <clears throat> let's go. I'm going to need a strength roll from Tufer. You get an extra die because you will have help and time to do bracing and such. All right. Failure is potential specific squishification for catch. So Two successes. Beautiful. Hey. So no problem. It's, it's literally the goblin jacking up and making room and then cash slipping in and then getting it secured and doing it kind of rinse repeat. So basically the two of you can burrow. Okay. Um, in about 20 minutes of effort, uh, you find <laughs> the remains of a woman uh, and it's, they've been here since the fall. So oh. it's skeletal. Uh, she was in a very bright dress of many colors, kind of like Lisa Frank kind of colors. But over time, those have become very muted, obviously. Um, she is, she was crushed by the collapsing building, but mm. is holding on to something with both hands. Well, take a look. Is this it? Well, you, yeah, they're kind of looking from the top, unless you're also trying to squeeze Navad. Navad is not cable pa passage. Oh, so I was not able to go down with you it. can. It'll require another possible specification. Well, here's what I see. There's a dead woman down here, and uh, uh, that's a little creepy. I wouldn't mind coming back. The light has vanished, by the way. Oh, the light has vanished? Mm. Uh, but I didn't see where it went. Ooh, it's gone. Uh, uh. Um, can you bring her out? Can we bring her out? You mean touch her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All <laughs> right. This Are is you really that? I mean, she's all bones. We're going to have to bring her out like in a pack. <laughs> Well, yeah. could, maybe don't don't disturb her. Does she have anything interesting? Too late. I have her in my arm. <laughs> Does she have anything? Uh, I feel like it's sort of like parts of her like falling off. So Tufer keeps like picking them up and like piling them back on. It's like a very <laughs> awkward, like I've got too many, yeah, too many bags. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, you, help, you help pull them out? Sure. Here, I'll so help. It, 
Oh, it is a, a, a woman, hard to tell the age because of the state of decay, um, dressed in a, in a blouse and what was once a very brightly colored skirt and is, is clean. Clean they, something in their hands. Well, that's very intriguing to me. Um, I'm going to see if I can pry her hands open to see what she might be clinging to. They come open? Uh, she was holding a pocket watch. <clears throat> I'm going to hold it up. So it's a souvenir uh, from a uh, something called the Haunted Schoolhouse from uh, an amusement park called the Learning Rainbow. So it's got a picture of a school bus so with like a skeleton driving it. Is it an that artifact? Driving the bus? Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing with the haunted schoolhouse. Oh, I see. Was, right. The haunted. It would take right, you right. all these things in history. It was like, what if the uh, the Boltman was a very friendly bus driver? Gotcha. And it was all kinds of like, you know, infotainment for kids. Hmm. It's a cherry business, uh, low overhead, able to write off, take donations. <laughs> It is an artifact of the old world, something miraculous and, and rare, and we found it by... Uh... Okay. Um, Mr. Override. I, I, I poke it. <laughs> it's me. Uh, so is anything special about it? Um, I, I don't know. Can we... Is it open? We can open it, right? I'm going to yeah, open the... For sure. Open open the pocket watch so it has it's no longer working uh -huh. but do you try winding it i mean I, yeah i mean watches are a little bit um a unknown quantity to me but i'm going to kind of try to poke and prod at all the various things it does not work it, it doesn't respond to anything yeah. hmm. very hard to repair yeah. This watch was probably important or or maybe hmm. Can I I'm gonna try to do a read on the corpse. If see if I can get any kind of like residual Either read down one die. Down one die. Ah, I got one success. Try reading the watch. Okay. So wow. you like get a, a peripheral read from the watch. Okay. A peripheral read from the, I'm kind of getting a vibe off mm -hmm. of the corpse that the watch is interesting. Okay. Oh. Also down a die. Uh, no. Oh, full, full. Yep. Full blast. Go get them. Roll them dice. Uh, another success. So we would see the face of the watch, uh, which has been frozen at 8.15. And then we would cut to uh, Navad's face. Navad, you see for the second time, the bombs drop. Okay. And you're reading, you think the thoughts of the owner of the watch who's thinking, but she'll never grow up. And you're aware the dead woman was pregnant. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so I saw the fall again. Mm -hmm. This person this woman died in the fall mm -hmm. and was holding this watch and she was going to have a baby and that made her really sad i assume about saying these things out loud yeah. i'm saying this to the yeah. party Beautiful. i'm interpreting what i got off of the watch to the rest of the party uh, at this point everyone who's not nevada hears like distantly very thin a child crying huh. Did 
Did you all hear that? Yes. Devon, I'm worried that we are heading towards that 50% where it <laughs> to do this. Well, either either the baby is mad and wants revenge for never having been born. Oh, boy. Or the baby wants to know it can just go away. Maybe the baby wants to go to that. I'm going to say one of my favorite I'm about to say something that I'm ex- as excited to say as when I explained to my daughter that I had just played Jesus. Um, oh, it, in in the episode a few. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was so back. fun to be able to share with Lauren. By the way, your dad just played Jesus. Uh, I need you to make an endurance save versus pregnancy, please. Me? Uh, yeah, Navad. Navad. Okay. I'm making. Well, you- good luck. Yeah. <laughs> endurance save versus pregnancy That's right. hey. if it were only that simple does he get Should a bonus for that ridiculous outfit uh, okay so <laughs> I got a one a four and a three that is a whole host of not successful uh, well you uh, become aware personally because you read the watch and your thinking was, well, what would the woman want? What would the baby want? The baby wants to be. To exist. And you become aware that it has found a way at some point through you to exist. And I'm cognizant of this. Yep. Also, the watch is no longer, like, it was basically a haunted watch. Okay. It's, it's not anymore. It's just a cool watch. It's just, now a, it's, cool... Now it's just a cool old antique yep. that hmm. was in the apocalypse. Uh, it, and it, it froze in on the time the bombs fell, and it just, once the haunt passes, it starts ticking again. Ah. Easy to fix. They're very easy to repair. Yeah. <laughs> very sturdy construction. Yes. Yes. Hey, 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 Goldwater. Um, mm. remember when we went out to the to the um, desolation that time and we, f- we fought the satyr guy and then he was kind of inside me uh, and then it was like weird stuff was happening to me yeah that sounds pretty weird I wasn't there but this sounds I, really weird and I didn't know if, if it was me right. or and then it turned out it was it, then it turned out it was um, it was him mm-hmm. um, that maybe happened again Tufer is very lost and so just sits down. (laughs) You're not alone, Tufer. This is all difficult to understand. So, uh, so Mike, GM question. What is this? What does it feel like? I'm just, I'm cognizant of it and I get to. uh... It's a little like when you had the writer before that you know there's something back here. Yeah. So. Apparently, sometimes I kind of absorb the spirit or the soul of other um, beings. And I think I just absorbed the baby. That was the light or was the... Maybe it was the light. I've absorbed the baby that never got born. Does that mean... I mean, like, are we going to, like, have to change your nappies or something? Like, what's... Yes, I have very limited knowledge about how to I'm get, not, bring a baby into the world. I'm a machine, I'm, but I'm not a baby making machine, so I don't, uh, know. I, I don't know how this works either. So maybe if I get really stressed, maybe I'll turn into a baby or, or, or maybe I'll like not physically, just like my being will become the baby's being. Okay, well, so don't stress out. I'll try not to. Navad, you're going to have to update your uh, taxes if this ah! doesn't become a child that you'll have a de- you have a dependent. So you will receive a, a tax credit, a yearly tax credit, which will uh, help in taking care of the child. Okay. If if it becomes an actual physical baby, 
it becomes a ghost baby, I will have to make a call. I'm going to say okay. while that conversation is happening, the camera would pull back <laughs> while, while Coldwater is explaining the tax <laughs> ratification. The tax, the tax ratification. The ghost baby. baby. Ghost baby. <laughs> and I think there is no better time to call a bio break yeah. than when uh, uh, the, the young man has apparently just become pregnant. I I go. Go. I'm, I'm, I'm it's a pregnant pause. It's a pregnant <laughs> pause. Later the next day, uh, Navad has obviously been pretty introspective. Um, maybe is it fair to say a little weirded out? Mm. Extremely weirded out, and also with this kind of like, why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> I guess I'm the magic guy, but like completely yeah. fair. Um, you are in the area, uh, and so this would be uh, Goldwater. Uh, you're on the long road off of uh, one of the arteries that's going to lead up to the area that's because this is all meant to be, you know, e exclusive, uh, you know, gated community off the beaten path. So you're in the part of the the trip which is getting away from the other parts of the city. Yeah, and uh, you actually passed the sign that says, "If you lived in Greenhaven, you'd be home by now." Oh, there was a robot that was working on this last time. Yeah. Hmm. It, it's been repaired. Okay, uh, and yeah, it had, uh, it had been corroded, and it had like a notch, and it was it was rewelding it, and it's it seems fine. So, if I understand correctly. It is easy to get in, but hard to get out of this community. Yes. I assume we want to go in because the, if there is an AI or a central point control, it will probably be within the enclave, correct? That is correct. Well, then, uh, do we just present ourselves at a gate? Do we need to be arrested? How does it work? Oh, they don't arrest you. They invite you in to look at the demo house and uh, <gasps> speak to the manager and uh, to sign. They, they're they very pushy. They push you to sign the papers. And one of the reasons we were able to. I have experienced this before. Mm -hmm. When AIs are stuck in a loop and they, they are intent on fulfilling their purpose, even if it means destroying everything while doing it. This is a dangerous situation. <laughs> we might deal with a psychotic AI we did not work. I, I'm fully <laughs> capable of putting my full focus on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Mr. Override. And are we there? This is it. The Enclave. We're very close. <laughs> yes. Like, Eddie's the one who got us out of that last time, right? He did some smooth talking and, and got yep. us all right. So I will say that, that we were able to talk our way out of the situation, partly by saying that we were interested in the location and possibly buying a home or more. So they will be expecting us hmm. and there will be an expectation along with the, them expecting us. That well, we so have you required a review of the security measures? Maybe bringing an expert in to uh, make sure that all the computer systems are up to snuff and maybe even we could have a tour of the data center just to make sure that our purchase will be secured in the right way. And then we're in. This sounds good, yes. Old dwarven trick. Let's die. I think you have laid out the plan <laughs> and we are going to go with that plan. You I turn a corner yeah. because you've been kind of doing, uh, you've been snaking up a hill mm -hmm. to get, because if you remember it was a little bit uphill uh, and not good line of sight, because again, those kinds of places never do have good line of sight. Uh, but when you turn around this, come around this last corner, uh, you see a crater and bits of charred motorcycle. Oh. Hmm. Wait, did somebody go over the speed limit and was obliterated with a missile? You said the, the, uh, the guard system is on, on constant high alert. All right, let's not step on the grass while we walk up here. <laughs> that's that's a, a good idea. Guys. 
I'm going to look at this motorcycle, though. Okay. Uh, give me, well, actually, no, it's, there's not a lot of it left. Um, it is of the kind of middling quality you'd expect from your average, like, raider. Uh -huh. Like, it's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, it's a very Mad Max looking, uh, the bits you're seeing, anyway. Hmm. There are also some chunks of burnt flesh. How recent? A week. Okay. Whether well, someone was trying to get in or trying to get out. Hard to tell. Right. Let's keep moving. Okay. So you go a little further uh, and you see up ahead a bunch of partial dead bodies in the ground. Yeah. Maybe four or five. Hard to tell because they're in partially in pieces. So you're telling me this is where you guys want to live? Yeah. Yes. Look at how efficient it is at keeping people out. I, you got a point. <laughs> it all it all depends on can we make it work for us and not against us. Not against us. Like as long as you don't ever expect visitors. You should be fine living here. That's kind of what we don't want. It is. Is other we, visitors. We only want authorized visitors. So these dead bodies uh, were all raiders. Uh, they've been ripped up by what looks like maybe SMG fire. Uh, and a couple of them have the emblem of curse uh, on, their, on their arms. Oh. I heard about this curse person. So a skull yeah. with a chain around it. Yeah, we've had a lot of problems with them out. We recently liberated ourselves. Our, but um, that's not good. You go by him of reputation as, and if you cross him, he will stop at nothing to destroy you utterly. Yeah. Because in his pursuit and his vengeance, it burns as hot as the sun. Mr. Override, if you could, please. We are on that side of the curse. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't need a reminder of uh, what's at stake. Um, so um, give me a four die roll, Goldwater. Uh, minor system note for anybody listening that plays the game. Uh, when in doubt, and there's not something that maps neatly to a skill, often you will just tell them to drop four dice. I got it. Two partials. Uh, that gives you, you think, the firing came from up. So it's hard to CSI it because of the right. kind of carnage, but it doesn't look like it went this way. It looks yes. like something was firing down. But that that aligns with what I know about the defense at this place. It feels like drones, which you theorize, but I don't think you saw. Oh, no, we didn't. But I did see high gun emplacements, but yeah. we're not near those. Okay. No. Hmm. Too far. But, but I believe yeah. one of you did theorize that that was something there. But what you saw was you saw emplacements and you saw that they had like clunky three C three PL yes. real estate agent bots. Yeah. And then little hovering repair bots. Okay. Oh so, yeah. Who for are you are your limbs and legs bulletproof by any chance? Is it an alloy that can deflect missiles? Uh yeah, pretty tough. <laughs> oh, cool. I'll walk. Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't mean I want to walk right into them, though. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> again, they're expecting us. They were not expecting curse. I think no yeah. one is expecting curse. Well, I often am expecting curse. Unfortunately, um, think about it a lot. Think about it a lot. Um, I, I, I heard. <laughs> you, is he like a tax evader? Like what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, he has. <laughs> I have sent him multiple, multiple missives, and I have not yet been able to audit him, and I will audit him. He will be audited. I mean, he seems like he's got a lot of auditing to do. What's auditing? Can we, we have uh, Goldwater on one, please, Colt? <laughs> oh, okay. Because uh, it seems like you would have some things to say about Curse's tax obligations. Huh. <laughs> 
Can't this wait. is how he's going down. All, all income is taxable. All income is taxable. Even that, ta even those, those, the monies that are gained through illegal procedures, you still must pay taxes on these. And that is how, that is how the IRS was able to assist the FBI in catching many a gangster. And this curse is at best a gangster and really honestly is a murderer. And he has profited off the people of Texas for too long. And if the way to apprehend or execute this criminal is through the tax code, then it will be done through the tax code. And I have the tax code. I am the tax code and I am the tax man. And when I audit someone, they either pay with monies and goods or they pay with their life and curse I hope he never pays a dime. As he finishes those kind words, huh. uh, you see up ahead what remains of the gate. Oh. So this was a gated community, uh, but the gate has been, your guess would be rocket launcher oh. because rather than opening, it's been blown out and from the direction going in. So someone blew the gate away. Uh, also the little stand that would have been at the level of uh, the modern, you know, put keypad entry to open the gate. That thing uh, has been fucked up. Like it's a stub at this point. Well, Agent Goldwater, before we go in, I just want to say if the irony doesn't escape me that we're going up against an AI which we suppose has gone a little bit overboard with its zeal and its single-mindedness in its goals. And after your little speech right now, I, I can't but see certain similarities because maybe maybe you also, I'm just a dwarf. Let's go in. <clears throat> it's... We can talk later. This maybe isn't the time. Hmm. So, uh, you, and you go through the gates. There are a, there are about three more corpses here. Oh God! And then through the gates, there are the remains of a small truck, and hmm. that has also been blown up. So there's big chunks of it all over the place, along with uh, uh, rotting flesh. Uh, you see from where you are, there were a couple of towers that had risen up and had something. Those that have been here before knew that those had little like missile launcher things on them. Both of those have been destroyed. Hmm. Well, it seems like some other people want to live here too. <laughs> uh, so this was the safe place that you thought would be to live in? Maybe I was wrong, um, but I had very high hopes. We have a lot of weird luck with this. Well, maybe we should find one of these real estate bots and get some information what happened here. Maybe it was just a fluke and the danger is now over. The office is on the right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the whole place isn't leveled now that we're further in. No. Oh, that's great. That's great. No, it was like more, little, the strikes were a little more strategic or like concentrated. It looks like there was a pretty big battle. It so, looks like, and you fought a couple of groups of uh, these raiders. It looked like a raider team, which is often a couple of motorcycles, sometimes four, and an armored car or small van or truck, and then something in the order of eight to 12 individuals. You fought three or four groups just like this. Right. But, yeah. Um, and I also know that. Curse doesn't just throw bad, like good money after bad. Mm -hmm. So if this didn't work out, then he like he may not come back unless he finds out we're here, and then he will definitely come back. Um, all right, uh, that, that seems reasonable. Yes, crap. Um, and also, right. uh, to reinforce that thought, he has been making exploratory um, movements like this, and your experience so far has been when they don't work out he tests and doesn't go that way. 
right? He only goes where there's weakness because what he's trying to do at this phase of his conquest is lock down what he can work down. Yeah. And then you get more resources, then it makes it easier to go after the places that were trouble. Yep. Yep. Because he's obviously playing the resource management game. Yeah. <laughs> dumb. Chris ain't dumb. We, we know how those go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh let's go check out the realtor's office. Okay. Uh, as you approach, a sign lights up that says welcome guests. Oh. Oh, nice. My friends, we're walking into the halls of danger. Let me read from the holy book. And I pull out a three ring binder with, that has software installation instructions on the front. And it was said to us, install from the folder to which you download the software. After extracting, double click to start installation. VPN. Let this strengthen your heart, my friends, as we go into the den of danger. Ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> so you go into the office. Uh, who leads? Uh, I'll go first. Cash does. I, I, oh yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, go. <laughs> I heard the door ding. That must have been Cash opening the door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is a squat robot that looks a little bit like Tweaky. Oh. If any of you is old enough to know who the hell Tweaky is. Oh, yeah. From Buck Rogers in the uh, 25th century. Bada, bada, bada. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little dude that wears a Frisbee on his tummy. Uh, <laughs> and he's he's got a tray. Uh, and he he waddles up towards, towards Cash. Would oh. you care for a quesadilla? Oh. Oh, I'm so hungry. Yes, this is excellent service. Thank you. Uh, just to check, right? Iron God prevents poisoning. Very good. Mm, very cheesy. Mm. It, 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 it tastes, it's an extruded substance. Mm. Um, and it's got some flavorant in it, but the flavorant has not been good for a while. Mm. Uh, it's so it me of spray cheese and uh, cable insulation. <laughs> Oh, oh uh, two fur reaches in to get some. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, it's like delicious. That sounds great. And uh, the, there is an, an office at the back where some of you have been before. Mm. And now where the, there's a it's sign that says leasing office on the door. Let's go talk to the robot. Yeah. So behind the desk uh, is a creepy mix of a C-3PO and a real doll. So it's um, early robotics, but with kind of almost like sex worker latex pulled over. Um, And it's installed behind its desk. However, it has recently taken damage. So obviously weapons were fired. So there are like chunks missing. Hello, Mr. Goldwater. Hello. Nice to see you again, although it seems you are a little worse for wear. Oh, nonsense, but thank you. Uh, Did you have some unexpected uh, visitors? We always make sure the grounds are secure. I can see that. I've Uh, been unable to process your paperwork. Your employer has not returned a series of calls. Mm. I think perhaps due to unexpected circumstances, about a hundred to 150 years ago that that number is no longer in service. Oh. Can we contact a bank or major lender? I would love to get your application through today. Uh, while they talk, could I walk around a little, look at the probably generic artwork on the wall, but also make an assessment if there's maybe, I don't know, a service hatch on the back of the robot, or if it's a model I know that I could maybe hack into or take over? Give me a hack test. Oh, yeah. All right. That is six of one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why don't I do it? I have a hack of one. I can do it. <laughs> one, one success. And so hey. as, as you're talking, uh, Cash walks up behind it 
mm. takes the cable, connects it to his neck, and then to the, the neck of the real estate agent. So continue to, to distract while he works. Yeah. I, I would say, I'm curious though, I, I, I thought of this place as being incredibly safe given the security measures that I saw the last time we visited. Uh, but the gate has been destroyed. There, uh, oh, the place your parts are on order, sir. Fear mm -hmm. not, Mister Goldwater. Did you do you have any security footage of this? It might make me feel better about a long term I'm purchase. Afraid, kind of no. that, that's not something we're at liberty to share. Or is it <laughs> so? Can <laughs> Uh, this is connected to an AI. Uh, do you want to try to reach the AI through this point, or do you want to figure out where the AI, AI is? First of all, but if I listen with one ear, I would like to try and see if I can downgrade the the uh, the, the security level of the recordings. Do you want to give it publicly available for exchange? Okay. For the uh, the general. Uh, Fluff presentation that they show new customers. I'll just <laughs> uh, give me another hacking test. Oh God! I... <laughs> oh well, one five. Okay. It's partial. A screen comes down from the ceiling over to your left and flickers to life, and it's got the super shitty pixel loss uh, kind of. Uh, it's not CRT. It's it's more modern than CRT, but it's it's a mess. Mm -hmm. But you see a loop of like, you know, Greenhaven, my home. How could I afford something like this? <laughs> and then it flickers <laughs> a little bit. Uh, and then you see a, a bunch of thugs wearing leathers and carrying chains and wielding guns, yelling curse, breaking in. And then uh, the defense tower is rising up and just chewing them up. Ow. Oof. Do you recognize those uh, shitty prick pixies? Uh, not, not individually, but... No. <laughs> that one was Malcolm. <laughs> oh, no! Malcolm, I like you. You were the cool one. <laughs> you had a run-in with them before, I thought. No, that that his uh his army is massive. No. Um okay. Well, well this the defenses I see held up actually really well considering. Yeah, and, and you don't see the whole battle, but it's pretty clear they had and again the groups you fought did. Like they have had some grenades. Mm -hmm. They probably had a rocket launcher or two, which means they took down like the defense towers, but obviously there were drones. Uh, and it, they won. Like you yeah. see a little clip that Cash cleared for you. You see them swiping left and going, fuck this and turning around. Yeah. You probably even see like a little buzzing swarm of drones chasing them, explaining like the guy in the motorcycle that was parts and parts that was probably taken out by one of those drones. Um, so the, uh, the sales agent, um, as you can see, <laughs> All manner of payment plans are available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, oh, I will. Yes, I will try to figure out if I can without alerting it to just see what kind of AI and where it might be located. So it's actually in a central. It's like a control center. Mm -hmm. It's at the heart of. It, it's basically laid out, and you experience this and. Uh, I believe this was like uh, session two of season two. So a while back, the group came through here and you found out that it is like a big traffic circle. Like it's laid out as a ring with a bunch of little roads leading off of it with clusters of buildings. Oh. In the middle of that, there is maintenance and then below that is engineering is kind of a fairly common layout which is similar to the layout that existed in the skyscraper you went to. Fair enough. Yeah, I will mouth from behind her, like, tour of the security building. You know what would really make me feel 
good about investing my future here would be to having seen the security's efficacy is to actually see the security center itself. Oh, Mr. Mr. Goldwater, I mean, Del and all, if I may. Uh, yes. Wal Walter, by the way. Walter. Uh, I, so are you going to try to mess with the security? Yes. Yes. I'll try. Yes. yes. Instead of tour of the greenhouse and butterfly garden, I'll <laughs> redirect it to uh, tour of the security core, if I can. I need another hacking test. Oh, wow. It'll be like, you can go to the security center, but you can't go anywhere near the greenhouse. Uh, damn it. Another five only. Okay. So the thing is, you have mastery. Oh, mm hmm Which I believe turns the five into a success. Ooh, well, I think, I, you mean, I think, I you think you're this. right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, too. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, suddenly I remember I should have hit curly bracket at the end. So, <laughs> into the room walks uh, another... So this is taller than the tweaky looking one. This is the one that's very uh, primitive C-3PO, like Macquarie concept drawing C-3PO level. Uh, very stiff movement, kind of like two of his legs used to be, but aren't anymore. Um, comes walking in. Um, oh, Miss, Mr. Goldwater. Oh. Uh, it's, you may not remember me. I, he gestures to, and he's actually, even though he's a robot, He's got the stupid plastic name tag, and this is Carlton. Uh, you were here um, seven months, 36 days and four hours ago, if memory serves. Oh, I nod approvingly. Mm, that's that, good. that seems about right. I have been asked to take you on a tour of the security building. Excellent. Carlton, nice to see you again. I appreciate this. Will your uh, friends be joining us? Yes, yes, they're also interested. Would they care for quesadillas? No. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll go for a quesadilla. So uh, the little tweaky bot uh, extrudes some more food paste <laughs> and uh, does uh, like a squishy, like George Foreman press to make it into a quesadilla. <laughs> Are the hands of the robot? <laughs> okay. Yes. So I spent several thousand dollars and four years of my life to learn that the only response to that is yes and. Yes and. <laughs> <laughs> and of course they are. <laughs> George Foreman hands. <laughs> so here you go, sir. Uh, so oh. you're all served mediocre uh, food paste quesadillas. Uh, and Carlton, as you have your snacks in hand, uh, will scorch you around. And you, you, it's a little strange. Um, one thing they seem to have taken as damage is the repair bots. And you'll see here and there that they were taking shots at them. So the, the uh, raiders kind of like, um, uh, and I know that redneck can be um, reductive. In this case, I do mean it though. So kind of like Rednecks taking pot shots at uh, uh, mailboxes, that, that trope, which absolutely does happen. We live in Texas. We know this is true. We've seen the mailboxes. Um, or are those people? And uh, they were clearly just like, look, it's a, in fact, I'll give you a three-second cutaway. Hey, look, Joe Bo, it's a repair bot. <laughs> Boom. It's, um, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a taxonomy thing. It's a, it's a logical thing. It's not all rednecks shoot at signs. Yes. One who shoots at signs is a redneck. Right. <laughs> right. Right. It's, it's the four, the three legged dog problem. Yeah. Um, now, so you'll, you'll see destroyed. It's the reason that some of this hasn't been repaired is they destroyed the bots that were keeping up the repairs. Yeah. So awesome. if that could be corrected, a lot of this could be at least partially put back into shape. Can I ask, are people currently living here or are all the houses empty because... So, as you're passing them... Oh, I should have warned y'all of this, but I didn't. 
there are people that help. So you know the test towns where they were dropping the nukes and they just had the spooky dummies just sitting watching TV. It's like that, but they're real people. So these houses have long dead corpses in them that for some reason the system never read as anything but resonance. So they're fully dressed. They're not being cleaned up. They've been ignored. So the system went like, well, that's Mr. Thompson and just would vacuum around him even though he's been dead for a fucking century. Uh, so yeah, Cash, as you're looking in the houses, yeah, Ooh. they are populated. Something is wrong with the AI, that's for sure. All right, <laughs> we're brainstorming here. First of all, we can easily make Tufer robot-like enough to maybe fool the security system. Second of all, Lord Nabot, you are now a pregnant person and the laws of robotics might make extra accommodations for two lives when it comes to not extinguishing them. We should play that to the full advantage. <laughs> oh, oh my God. So and we're gonna make me look more like a robot. If need be. Also, I was thinking maybe the thing we should try to achieve is a reset of the AI to its factory state where it was still just doing its job correctly instead of over time losing its mind. That way you would keep the security functions and have an AI that actually would take care of you instead of keep you in an undead state. Uh, I don't actually think that the AI is deviating from its core mission. Oh. I think it's doing exactly what it was supposed to do. It's supposed to shoot people who leave? And keep dead people in houses? Uh, I don't think it was it factored for those things. It probably never expected a mass extinction event. They probably figured the People would take out the dead bodies, right? I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to you. But yeah. my my feeling is is that it is not gone crazy. It's just doubled down on what it's supposed to do. Well, yes, to a somewhat extreme extent, I would say. But yes, let's see the world we're in. Walter, move on. Uh, no, wait, it was Carlton. Carlton. Because, yeah, oh. because you're thinking these thoughts as you're walking, you take a look. Because of the way it's built, the head is a little large and Tufer is a goblin. It is plausible <laughs> that if you were to empty Carlton's head, the head could be made into a helmet, <laughs> which then would allow Tufer to pass as an android. So last time we made me pass as a as a just a non-cyborg goblin. Now we're going yeah, we're the, other way. the other way. It's okay. like karma. Flip it. Right. <laughs> We don't, we don't need to we haven't needed to sneak by anything yet have we no. all right well, it's, i feel like we should just go on this little tour as the dwarven saying goes be prepared for everything including taking heads off i <laughs> tell you what i'm prepared to take heads off i like your spunk to her and i'll fix your legs i swear thank you <laughs> so you go through there, there's a, a circle and then there's the front area that you went through and this the side place that has the office, which is the only thing you ever did before. And then you went, you did swing around and you left. So what you didn't do last time is you didn't go around to where the entrance to the middle is, which is basically staff, right? It's, that's where maintenance is, that's where security is, that's why. So you follow Kurt Carlton around and there is a fence there. Uh, and it says, you know, security employees only. Uh, and he just, kind of waves that direction and the fence opens and you enter and the inside is like a big courtyard in in like a, a apartment building uh, and there is a in the middle of and there are a couple of smaller buildings uh, and they are the kind of things that might be like that one uh, could easily be where the maintenance bots were getting tools for upkeep but there is a main building that seems to be support security and all of that uh, it's very chunk of concrete, not attractive at all, brutalist looking because it, it's not front facing, right? It doesn't have to be sexy, but there is a small swarm of drones buzzing around the top, giving mm. it a very dark tower, ominous look. Well, let's do it. 
Carlton stops before entering the inner area. This is as far as I go. Thank you, Carlton. Well done. I like your memory. It's very, very acute. En enjoy your visit. Mm -hmm. And he just stands there. All right. Well, we'll go in. No. Okay. Three of the drones drop from the swarm and start coming in towards you. Uh, just following us? Uh, not following because they're up there ahead coming in. No. Huh. Not good. Can we close the door behind us and keep them out? So it's a it's a fence. It's like open. Oh, I see. Because oh, this is all build a cluster of buildings with fences between them. You came in through one. This is just all open. This is outside. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, one of the three drones actually has a small rocket hanging from it. It looks like the payload of the other two has been dropped. It's coming towards us or from behind us to join? Towards you from the building up ahead that you're going. Okay, towards us. Okay. I think they're just to Got accompany it. us. Let's not, let's not pop off unless we have to. I'm impressed by your optimism. Let's slowly walk. <laughs> okay. Uh, they get within about 20 feet and start to kind of orbit you. Um, and you're positive? Cash, give me a four die roll, please. No. <laughs> I'm not positive. I'm just trying to go with the least violence. No, nothing. Uh, and one one is that. Oh, yeah. So you try to read the lights and the sides of the things mm -hmm. using beep boop to see if you can figure out if that's enough to display mm -hmm. to figure out what they're doing. Um, they're obviously been ordered to run some kind of routine. You have no idea what they're up to, but they're they're doing something. Well, I would hope they would warn us away before they start shooting. <laughs> yeah, but let's let's find out. Just be ready. So you're gonna walk towards the, the big door? Yeah. Yeah. One of the three, and it's not the one with the rocket, drops down to your like eye level and slowly moves in towards you. The other two drop back and up a little bit. Oh. Uh, Hello? Weapons are not allowed anywhere on the premises. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'll just go stand in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and as you back up and you go to stand in the corner, you kind of look back. Goldwater's carrying an ass load of weapons. I have, a, I have three guns. <laughs> <laughs> I have three guns on me. Um, two, two for just has this thing that she assumes when somebody's like referring right. to dangerous weapons that they're referring to it's, her. It's me, yeah. As a, as a, it's as clearly a, me. Right, just living weapon. Oh. Oh, uh, two for, I think it's this. Uh, oh. Okay. I'll uh, go set my guns down near the fence. I'll just have to rely on my wit. Marshall. <laughs> my martial acumen and Lord Navad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and two for actually, really. Yeah. Other hand, we could try an old trick I, I used in, in the vault when we would make cleaning bots explode with a logic bomb. It's, it's worth a try. <laughs> hey, their friend drone, imagine no one and nobody sit on a roof. No one flies away. Who's left? A little red light comes on and it makes its little sensor face look angry. I don't think it likes your joke. Yeah. Just question. That's that seems mean. I'm gonna set down my stuff and we'll continue. So and uh Navad, you don't carry weapons, right? I don't I don't carry weapons. A uh, two for what do you have? Show my hands. Uh <laughs> Me. Yeah, their body. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, they seem content. Cash, they don't seem to have picked up on what you have. Yeah, I imagine that my disruptor would be like an old Pringles can 
like with batteries taped around and some some microchip boards that could be anything from a radio to a toaster. It, it's they're they're sniffing and they didn't pick it up. So no, they, yes, good to go now. They will escort you to the door, and there's a click, and the door slides up and away. All right. I'm so that question you asked was supposed to perturb the robot so much that it would explode it worked <laughs> with lower level intelligences because they cannot fathom the intricacy of language and logic and it overloads their their intrinsic uh, intrinsic uh, linear wave front capacitor if that makes sense no um but if it works, it works. I can't. While that conversation is going on, though, Cooper <laughs> is standing off to the side, going, "If nobody in the one was standing over there, <laughs> the <laughs> nobody and no one." Well, you, bro you broke your goblin, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go in. Let's go. Well, in. Uh, so I have the feeling. Oh, are there more robots here? No but there are lights on the floor that are leading you by lighting up. Mm. Oh, fancy. Very cool. All right, well, let's do it. Uh, yeah, if there's any indication where we get to the AI core or anything that sounds like it could be helpful to get close to it, I think first we need to figure out what's wrong with it. If there is anything wrong with it. Maybe, yeah, it hasn't caught up on current events. Well, Cash, I'm just going to have to le let you take the lead here. This is great. I will not let you. <laughs> <laughs> On <Listener override>. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, a trooper to make a willpower save against logic bomb. <laughs> 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 you can do it. I believe in you. That explodes. It's just All gibberish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's all meaningless. <laughs> oh no! Tuber is distracted. Uh, will not be making per perceptual rolls for a while. <laughs> we kind of have to lead her around because she's kind of like some working on something. <laughs> uh, all right, so you follow the lights and they take you down uh, the kind of like there's a lot of Bond movies. That is like the inside of the missile tower with the stairs mm. wrapping around going down. Mm -hmm. I, I, Those I'm kinds of stairs. Yeah. Uh, and then there is a big door that opens for you, and there is a computer center. Pretty straightforward. And whole racks of, you know, Star Trek original series, flashing Ooh. light, 60s sci fi <laughs> white pants. This is like a, oh no, that's a bad word. This is like a church. Look at this. Look at the beauty of it, the masterful construction, the beautiful, elegant design. An artificial brain churning along for a hundred years, maybe unaware of what has happened. This is sad and awesome at the same time. SSL. I will go and uh, try to find a port. Okay. Oh, also, if my ears start smoking and I go into convulsions, please pull that cable out of my head. Yes. It has only happened once. It's very unpleasant. So he sits down. He checks a bunch of the monitors. He checks a bunch of consoles. He opens a panel, pulls a little wire plug thing out, prepares to plug in. And when you open the panel, there is a tank with a brain in it. Yeah. Um. Ah. Ah. This is unexpected. <laughs> Devon, you've dealt with human bodies in, held in state. Yep. Well, aren't we just... <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I, have I seen anything like it? Does, wait, does this look like some weird sign somebody put this in later, or do I think this is the original this, design? You think, and you, you've heard rumors of this, this appears to be AI running on meatware instead of hardware. But well, well, it's a brain. <laughs> you know what? Instead of plugging in, I'll see if there's maybe just a voice module so we can talk to it. 
there is. Connecting to another brain seems maybe dangerous. So you fire it up? Yeah. Okay, so you know to activate it, you say hello. So you say hello to it? Yes, yes, sorry, hello. Hello, world. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Huh. Daisy, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read all the old texts and I have studied the ancient ways. This is, these are holy words. Hello world. It's like magic, a magic spell that shows that whatever you're doing is working. It's a good sign, my friends, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, hello, my, my name is Cash. Who are you? I am Mina. M who? Mina. Mina. Ah, hello, Mina. Very nice to meet you. You run this place, right? It is my privilege. Oh. Hmm. 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 Okay. Uh, are you aware of what happened in the last hundred or year, so years? Certainly. The fall, the bombs, the cataclysm. We have a 0% failure record. I'm very proud of them. Ah, all right. Well, Mr. Goldwater was with you. Yes. Hello. Yes. So he is. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mina. We've been able, been unable to process your paperwork. We will, though. We'll find a way to get you in. We have had zero unsatisfied customers. I look forward to counting you among them. Oof. Uh, Nina, this might come as a little bit of a shock, but I think the reason why the paperwork was not completed and bank statements weren't sent and, and, and background checks weren't fulfilled in all of that. The power in the room goes off. The what? The power in the room oh. goes off oh. and there is oh. a hissing noise and gas starts coming out of the air vents. Whoa! This Hold is my breath! <laughs> Crap. So I need endurance saves from everybody. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Uh, success. One success. Two successes. Yeah, good, good, good. And six. All right, so you hold your breaths. The door has locked. Oh. As, you're, as you're messing with it, the thing stops, the power comes back on. And you just gotta... <clears throat> no one loses consciousness. Oh. All the lights flicker back on. As I said, Zero percent. Very, very proud. Did, did you just do that? Me? No. Uh, can you ask the brain that you're Mina, was, what, the gas flooded the room. Did you do this? Mina? The lights go off again. Oh, crap. <gasps> and endurance saves all around. <laughs> So there's a door that's like closing, like dropping. Well, it's just latching. It, it's the door you came in through. Can I but can I like get an arm wedged in there? You want to just yeah, it's not opening and closing, it's being closed. But do you okay. want to open it? Yeah. Give me a strength. First of all, your endurance first. Sorry, what? Endurance save from everybody. I got okay. it. I was I, got it. I failed. Was that a yes or no, Shannon? I, I succeeded. Uh, succeed. Yeah. So Cash goes, yeah, and collapses. Why? Tooper walks over to the door. Give me a strength roll. Make a strength roll. Oh. Yep. <clears throat> so it's kind of like why you might want a cyborg with you. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a, a scream of metal and a pop, and the whole lock just kind of gives way, and there's a hole in the door now. And you open the thing, and raining gas pours out. Lights flicker on. 
And um, I go over to Cash and like shake him. <laughs> Can you wake up? Huh? You're nauseous. Yeah. Hmm. All a, right. A voice it's comes outside. on. Oh. That's a male voice, not a female voice. That says, "Thank you for your visit. Please move to the exit." Um, let's talk outside just for a second in hushed whispers. Okay. 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 Okay, this is a real brain. This isn't an artificial intelligence. It's a real brain. So it might be really mad because it's been in a in a tank for 150 years. Probably we would all go mad if that happens. So I'm not sure this can be redeemed. I don't know much about brains. Do they like have a shelf life or something? <laughs> like, they're all bad. I mean, I can probably connect with it and see what I can do, but this is not an AI. I mean, so it's odd the, it's um, my purview. I don't know if this brain came from a person, yes. I could try to see if I could communicate with them or if it's like a mm. brain that grew just for this. I don't know. Well, I would say we should try your ability. Maybe you can absorb it. Also, you should remind that thing that you're pregnant and knocking you out with some gas might hurt your pregnancy. Okay. And you back into the room, Navad? Good yeah, luck. Let's go. I'm going to go back into the room. Okay. Um, you know that to talk to Mina, he said hello to her. What? To talk to Mina, he said hello. Um, okay. Um, but I don't have like a means to do that, or is it, or you is just it absolutely? Spoke out loud. Just okay. Um, hi, hi, Mina. I'm Hello. Lord Navad. I'm with Agent Goldwater, and and also uh, Twofer and Cash. We were just here. Yes. Um. So I was wondering if um, if I could get to know you a little better. Oh, we have a variety of amenities, but they would have explained that to you at the uh, leasing office. No, no, no. I mean, I mean you, Mina, the the individual, not the amenities and the stuff. I want to get to know you. And I'm going to go slowly, put my hand, like get walk closer, and see if I can put my hand on the the side of the tank. It pauses and you go ahead and make another divination Steve. test yep uh all fives i got three fives and then one uh unsuccessful but um okay. that was the best i did was was three partials you hear surprisingly clearly oh thank god <laughs> and then you feel something come out of you out of me? Yep. Come out of me? Yep. Is it the baby? There's nothing else in you now. <laughs> it's the baby. Um. Okay. Uh. Oh boy. Oh. Okay. Uh. I, you mean. hear? You hear Devad? Doing what Shannon just did. Mm -hmm. Like Devad is literally like, oh, okay. Um <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, literally that's what I'm doing. Goldwater, did he fuck it up? I can't tell. Uh Lord Navad, are you okay down there? The lights go off, but there's no gas. Um Do you need me or us to come down there? No, I I think it's working out. Um it's gonna be even weirder than anything we've done in a it's it's weird, man. Okay. <laughs> Coming from Nevada. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little weird. Maybe this is my chance because maybe the brain is offline for a while while processing whatever you did. And maybe I get a chance to reset it or look at its current current state. Do you want to rush over to the console? Yeah, and all right. Rush back in and now I jack in and see what, what, what I can find out. Maybe something. Oh, so, oh, yeah. No need for a test. This is definitely within your ability. You get um, a very expensive special effects sequence from a mid '80s sci-fi movie, where you get like spinning shaft of light 
and computer graphics running by you like Star Wars, uh, uh, Star Trek the movie style. And beyond all of that, you see floating a glowing blue baby. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> here. Wow, double <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> Ash, are you okay? Oh, <laughs> so man, it's a baby. Okay, wow. Uh, so, huh. So let me <laughs> create the, the mental image that invaded Navat is now in the brain and has basically overwritten the crazy brain, but it's now a baby. Ouch. Well, you had talked about a fresh reboot. Mm-hmm. As far as you can tell, poking around what you have access to, that's what's happened. <laughs> uh, okay. When you, look, when you looked up the screen in front of you, the readout, the command line prompt actually says, hello world. Yeah, yeah, dude, goo goo. All right. <laughs> well, this is great. One thing I would like to do before I get out to bring the good news is to see if I can give us in any way like special clearance so we're not being attacked the moment we exit this building because now a baby is in charge and might just accidentally shoot us. I need a hacking test. Yeah, I'll I'll do it. It's Navad's kid. It's not going to hurt us. One success in two fights. It was my kid for like a day. Yeah, but still, come on. Yeah, but you birthed it, and now you're the proud parent of a gated community. As far as Cash (laughs) can tell, uh, yeah, what is the gender reveal party like if it's a gated community? Oh, man. I think it's just figure it out. Is that brown? Yeah. So, uh, Cash, so one of the things that had gone wrong is uh, its file of residence has been cleared so basically you can whitelist or even tag everybody in this group as like employees sweet so Uh, you can go into the now empty list and populate it with you yeah i you know what i'm just gonna make if i can agent goldwater admin so he can add more people because i don't know who else is supposed to live here perfect and then that is all I will do, and then I will log out. And it's like, well, Lord Navad, uh, congratulations. <laughs> I think you will probably, for the next at least 12 years, have to teach this community <laughs> how to govern itself and how to use rockets and missiles. So you are indeed a parent. Fresh uh, reboot, indeed. Okay. Um, I guess we did it. Also... Agent Goldwater, you are now admin of this facility and you should have at least some influence over this. But the higher function will probably not be online for a while. Maybe not until puberty, which I would assume might be a rough time for all residents. (laughs) I don't want to fight. Shoot your own missiles. (laughs) Leave me alone. So at this point, the screen in front of you that just said, hello world, mm-hmm. oh, that, when Navad said, well, okay, it says, daddy, question. <laughs> name it, name it. Um, uh, yeah, um, I guess so. I guess so. No, um, it's affirmation, not Navad. Don't yes, let um, that- Yes, yes, <laughs> we... We are your parents, uh, me, and 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 everybody who's here. We're all your parents. It makes the very simplest, like uh, Electric Dreams. It does the the smiley face on the screen. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> hey all right. guys, we're going to leave that there which is uh, you have taken control, <laughs> in a sense, uh, of uh, Greenhaven. You don't fully know everything that's left. You do know that you're at least on Curse's radar. You hope he isn't coming back. Uh, but next week, we have another special guest, uh, Jordan T. Maxwell, another uh, uh, local improv legend and uh, gamer boy of, of high repute. Uh, who will be joining you as a mercenary 
hired to defend uh, the town in case of attack. They're trying to get uh, the the infant uh, community, literally infant community, <laughs> to a functional, self repairing level. Um, so, thanks to, very much to Tanya for stepping in at the last minute. Yeah. And with content that wasn't at all prepared for you because I had no idea you were going to be playing. <laughs> yeah, it turned out awesome. Yeah. And uh, thank you to Andreas, who you hear every every game, by the way, because he is the mysterious German voice. That is correct. <laughs> he is the German voice. But uh, Cash was, was fucking cool. Love him. Um, so are we... We're gonna go to Shannon. I guess go to me. I mean, uh, you've uh, you can you can bump it over there, Colt. Uh, but Mike uh, has pretty much said everything uh, that I'm gonna say, which is uh, to thank uh, Tanya and to uh, and to thank Andreas for uh, being our German voice, uh, our uh, at the uh, top <laughs> of the show, um, which he was not tonight because we have to give a shout out to Colt Joyce, our technical director, who also our narrator this evening. Let's hear it for. Uh, Let's hear it for Colt. Uh, let's hear it for Brett, our uh, chronologist, our, our uh, um, war keeper. Uh, let's uh, hear it for the moderators. And uh, let's hear it for you, our delightful fans and audience. Until next time, we'll see you in the wasteland. <laughs>